Hello, welcome to this Q&A with Kalida, me. Today's topic will be improvisation tips, tips for dance improvisation. I know this is a topic that has been requested often in the past when I was teaching classes because improvisation can put fear as well of joy, as well as joy in the hearts of dancers. While I let some people Hi Maria, come in. Let me know, let me know in the comments if you are a dancer who prefers to improvise or to choreograph. These uh, two opposite sides of the spectrum, as we will discuss later on. S most dancers have a preference or feel more comfortable doing either the improvisation part of the spectrum or they like to plan in advance and choreograph. Let me know, let me know. Do you choreograph or do you improvise or do you do a bit of both? My first tip for improvisation would be to... <laughs> Hello! Thank you! Check out my new background, by the way. I wanted to make this a bit exciting, so I had this one <laughs> in my home for a few weeks, but I didn't have the time or a headspace to set it up. And I think it's nice for Q&As and maybe, maybe new pictures will come out. Anyway, if you are a dancer, uh, you will be, whenever you perform or learn a dance, either improvising or choreographing or doing both. And um, a secret is, a very uh, hopefully heartening tip is, it doesn't matter which of the two you prefer. If you practice improvisation or work on it with the tips of today, your choreography will become easier and if you practice choreography with the tips of today you will find it easier to improvise so hopefully the tips of today will be for both doesn't matter which one you prefer hi hello so let's dive into it yes um i love about improvisation the freedom that it gives hi Giri. but i also love if i have a vision so if i want to make a dance that i can i can translate a certain image or a certain feeling to the audience consciously. So it's good to have the skills, the skills of both. And uh, knowing how to make a dance can make your choreography or improvisation more impactful and it will, it will feel more comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm getting a compliment for if you see this on YouTube, that the background matches this um, outfit. And that's one of my tips. Uh, have a, practice your visualization. No matter if you improvise or choreograph, if you train your eye and train your ear for the music, train your eye for what it is you like to see when you see a dance performance. If you train your eyes, <laughs> your mind will become better at creating things on the spot. So, <laughs> okay, first tip. Forget about the difference between improvisation and choreography. It is the same, it's one and the same, it's a spectrum, yes. It's all about the decisions you make. You either make the decisions right away while you're dancing or you make the decisions earlier. So it's all about the decisions you make and the difference between choreography or improvisation is simply the timing of the decision. But you can get better at making these decisions consciously and subconsciously by practicing both. So, <laughs> if you are a dancer who improvises always, challenge yourself and make a choreography. It doesn't need to be performed, just for you. Make something, make something. Decide beforehand and it will make you, your improvisation richer and more, um, more <laughs> dramatical, maybe even. So just take a song and visualize what you would dance without dancing it. Make a plan. And then if you dance, you can still improvise. But this practice of creating a dance in your mind and then in your body and playing with it, tweaking it, it's very, very, very good to get better at improvising consciously. So you want to be like in a half dream state when you do this. If you are someone who improvises always, this is good for you. If you are someone who needs the choreography for safety, because that's the main reason that students, or if you are new at something, and the teacher says, boom, freestyle, improvise, you freeze. That's what I used to do. I just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what would be correct. I didn't know if it would, if it would be good enough uh, or if I would come up with anything. Yes, and that's just a matter of 
um, confidence and also experience. This gets easier and easier. As you gain more skills and more ideas, more will come out. But if you freeze, don't worry, I have tips for that specifically. One thing to do is <laughs> give yourself little bites. Yeah, so if you are fearful of improvisation and you like to plan your dance completely, do that. But choose one part in your song, in your next one you work on, if it's for practice or performance. I know we cannot perform right now, but even if you just make a dance or have a piece of music, choose one little bit, maybe eight seconds, maybe one rhythm, uh, one part, let's say eight seconds. And there you give yourself the freedom to do whatever comes. Even if nothing comes, you just go into a pose real slowly and you breathe. And you go to another pose and you breathe. And then you go back to your plan. Yes, so deal. <laughs> if, you, if you think, yes, 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 yes. It is, it is all useful. And if you practice one, the other will, will get better. So even if you've never improvised, but you've always made choreographies, you have so much input already in your mind that will at some point come out if you practice the dragging it out of your, <laughs> out of your mind body. And if you've always improvised, you have so much muscle memory and musical connection because that what you, that's what you practice when you do it real time that you could easily do this with your mind instead of with your body and improvise virtually and then and then make it through and tweak it before you bring it out did you know that uh, scientists like einstein they imagined the solutions to their problems sometimes in their sleep so your subconscious already does it even if you don't know you're doing this you already can do that. Hi, Kristin. Hello. So we are talking about improvisation versus um, choreography. And I just, <laughs> I'm trying to convince people <laughs> that it's all one and the same. It's just different sides of the same coin. If you like to improvise, give yourself one song where you visualize instead. Make a plan with the tips of today. And if you like to choreograph the next dance you make, eight seconds of it, you will allow yourself to freestyle, just to practice it. And that's all it is. You practice it, it gets better. It's a skill. You don't have to say to yourself that you are, that you don't like this or don't like that. It's probably just that it's unknown and that you don't feel comfortable, but that's a different story. It's a different story. And also I am a choreographer or I, I am an improviser. That's just part of you. You are in potency all. <laughs> deep okay second tip is think of going back a step before you improvise before you improvise before you make yourself crazy if improvisation is not comfortable that's probably why i got the question think of it as <clears throat> uh, what is your goal if you have a performance coming which music will it be you can start there. Give yourself limitations. Limitations will free up. Uh, yes, we will visualize, visualize a lot in Boost Lirgiri. We will work on this because it can, it can amplify anything you do with your body. So, <laughs> so if you want to practice improvisation, give yourself limitations to begin. So tip one is improvisation equals <laughs> choreography. It's just a matter of timing. Tip number two is limitations create freedom and they free up creativity so you make yourself you make your improvisation options smaller and then the next time you improvise you take different options and these are rules you set for yourself it doesn't matter if you break them yes <laughs> this is just to give you some guidance a starting point and then it will make it easier after that so suppose you have a song suppose you have a performance opportunity, it may be video, it may be 3D, then you start to ask yourself questions and the answers to these questions will be your limitations or your anchor, which you will improvise around. First question will be, which music? If you don't know which music is going to come, <laughs> it will be challenging and that's something that can be really fun. But, <laughs> but to begin with, probably knowing the music can give you an anchor. So. One option would be to know your music well. Listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it while you're cooking, while you're resting, while you are uh, folding socks, but maybe also while driving, but drive carefully if you do that. And then 
sit yourself down, do nothing and listen to the music or lay yourself down if you want to do some relaxation exercises, which we do in Boost. We just lay down with the feet up. I recommend this for everyone to relax your body. And then if you, if you feel like you want to do something, put on a piece of music that you want to dance to, improvised or choreographer feeling, and then you just listen to it and whatever images come up, you try to remember it or jot them down. But it's about what does this music do to you? Does it make you feel happy? Does it make you feel emotional? Does it make you feel dramatic? Does it make you feel excited? Does it do all of that because it's different atmospheres? That's what listening to the music on repeat is good for. That's the first thing, is what does this feel like? <laughs> what does this feel like? And this gives you your first constriction or anchor. If this is a happy song, you can, you can forget all of the options that are not happy. <laughs> this will free up your mind. And you just go with the happiness and then it will match the music. Yes, the music will speak to you and your body will feel comfortable if it's in harmony. So that's very abstract. How does the music feel? If you go a bit more concrete, do you know the music piece? Can you research it? Is it a known song that has text or is it maybe a song that has text but the text is instrumental? Then you can just look up. What is this song about? Who is this from? What time is it from? And this can give you inspiration. Yes, it's not to limit you. It's to give you inspiration and ideas that you can then use when you improvise or when you choreograph. So use the music as your source of inspiration and uh, research can make you free <laughs> because you don't have to do anything literally. It can just give you a sense of what am I doing? And once you know what you are doing, you can explore from there. So suppose this is a golden era song and it's by Farid Alatrash and you know them. You can look them up on Google and you know what atmosphere this is. You can do your own version of that or you can do something else, but at least you will know, okay, this song, it'll give you confidence and confidence is what it's about. So first, how does the music make you feel without researching it? Second, research a bit if you are curious. Uh, what's the text? Who is it from? When is it from? How does this look? When was it made and why was it made? Third, the music itself. Does it, what is it? Is it Egyptian? Is it Turkish? Is it, I have to say, Western? Is it Lebanese? Is it folklore? Is it Majense? Is it fantasy? What is it? And if you know what it is, this also will give you tons of inspiration. Is it fantasy? Then what is your vision of fantasy? Do that. Uh, does it make you see veil? That's what visualization is about. Sometimes I see a dance or I hear a music and I think immediately oh, this needs to have wings and then <laughs> and then I can improvise to it with wings but the visual is what gave me my first anchor so give yourself these they are really fun to play with then also your improvisations will all have their own character their own taste their own flavor and same with choreographies if you have concepts if you have ideas and you Explore within them instead of doing everything you know in one dance, which can be very tempting. If you spread it out, allow yourself to not do everything in one dance, but take different dances for different things, you can go deeper and wider within them. And that's where the creativity comes out. <laughs> yes. So in your choreography, in your uh, improvisation, listen to your music. How does it make you feel? What's this music about? And then what is in the music? which rhythms, which uh, styles, yes? Also that will give you inspiration. If there's Saidi in emergency, for instance, oh, by the way, if rhythms trip you up, uh, but you want to learn how to dance, hi Karen, to a song that has different rhythms, I've got you, <laughs> yes. Every last Wednesday of the month, we will have a dance um, and theory session here on Facebook Live at 12.30. 24th of February is the next one and we will explore one rhythm per month and that will give you also information, confidence and ideas. So if then a song comes and it has one of these rhythms, you will have a part where you can improvise or a part where you can make some combos because you know the rhythm. We must check the Twitter. Yes, 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 yes. If you know the backstory of a song, it can be uh, very enriching for your dancing, even if you don't do it literally. It's, it's still in there. The knowledge 
once you know it, you cannot unknow, it'll give you more heart in your dancing because you're not just doing moves. You're doing a thing with meaning. And you don't have to sing the meaning with your mouth. You think of it or you feel the feeling it is. Suppose the song is about romance, yes? Deep romance or sad romance. Deep or sad romance. <laughs> say, say it's deep romance and you move and you imagine you're in this romantic film. That'll change the texture of your movements. It'll influence it. And suppose it is a song, but it's about longing and someone you miss. You might do the exact same movements, but there will be a hint. I don't like when it's too melodramatic, <laughs> maybe because I'm shy. But even if there's a hint of this genuine longing, if you imagine how would I feel if I missed someone and was not able to meet them, which is in these times. This is the reality. There are people we love we are not able to visit. Or maybe people we miss. Just thinking about that, my face changes, my posture changes, and I can do movements, and it can be just the same movement. But there will be a bit of heart in it, and the heart will be <laughs> doing either this, a happy heart or a longing heart. Doing a circle, it's a different thing. Yes, okay, that went really deep, but it's the same. Whatever you improvise or you choreograph, if you know the meaning of the music, or if the music has some kind of meaning for you, even if you don't, if it doesn't have a backstory, it's just a violin. And the violin makes you want to uh, uh, think of all kinds of things. That music speaks to you and whatever you dance to it, it's genuine, it comes from you. Okay, so that's also why I advocate to improvise and allow yourself to at least part of your dancing to freestyle because then more comes out once you get comfortable with it. But also, <laughs> if you have visions, to plan a bit, to make yourself plan a bit so that you have more vocabulary to work with if you improvise. Something that you practice may come out and it may also give you when you have a confidence dip. Your confidence might go like this, like a landscape, if you improvise or perform, yes? You may be influenced by your own thoughts, by the music, by the light, anything can happen. You might slip a bit and then you wake up, <laughs> yes, <laughs> when you're on the stage. Maybe, maybe something happens unexpectedly and it changes your state of mind. Then it's good to have little bits to bring you back to the music. Then you know, oh yes, I was here and this is where I sometimes do this. And then you can go back into the zone. Yes, 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 yes. If you want to learn about rhythms, taking some drum classes, that gets the rhythm really inside because <laughs> if you study something, you will know it uh, deeply. And if you know it deeply, also again, more confidence will come out and more, more freedom. That's what this is about. Also, my theme of the week is freedom. If you, if you check my uh, profile, I've been philosophizing about this because I've been um, exploring these kinds of things in classes that I'm taking, but also in our boost classes. We are diving very deep into um, changing little things in how we move and then noticing how much changes so we can free up our bodies with little tweaks with little bits of consciousness and that's very interesting and this will okay <laughs> i can talk for hours about boost i will do that later but this kind of thing connecting to your body that's my tip number four so tip number one forget being only this or only that mix it up practice the thing that's less comfortable and get better at both tip number two Give yourself limitations and within these limitations, go deeper and wider. Number three, let's start with music. <laughs> Just one, one tip. That's listen to it, feel it. What does it make you feel? Then research. So first feel, then research, and then you have two angles to bring together. And then third, uh, work, on, work on your knowledge in general. Rhythms, if you learn rhythms, which we will do in this group, for free, then you will have more. You will have more input, you will have more um, ideas. Because if it's all one abstract thing, if you don't recognize anything, it can be harder to know what to do, yes? But if you know, oh, this is Saidi, even just Saidi feeling, <laughs> and then, oh, this is, this is Sar. Your feeling will change, and even if you don't do any movements, you will feel more confident. Yes, yes, yes. Boost is fun, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And also, anything you do, anything you do that connects your body and mind, frees up energy, yes. 
uh, we can get stuck in these times. So even just doing movements with no one watching, not even yourself, no mirror, just doing movements and noticing the weight in your feet. Yes, that can be something that helps you also. So we're moving on to tip number five, connect with your body. So forget about the music for a moment. If you are improvising and the music is, you know the music, but still you feel not confident or you lose yourself or you just you start panicking, connect to your body. This you can do before you perform as a preparation, as a safety, but also during whatever happens, going back to your, back to your body, the thing you live in <laughs> or the thing that is you, it's all connected. Going back to yourself, taking a breath. <clears throat> Let's do that. Let's breathe. And just exhale. So I'm breathing in strong. This I do before I go on stage and I'm a bit nervous. I inhale strongly. And I exhale. Passively. <laughs> if you need to have more energy, or if you are really panicking already and you need to remove some adrenaline, do this. I, I, I um, suggest doing this before going on stage, before improvising. Inhale with me. <sighs> strong. Again, inhale. Exhale strong. <sighs> Feel it here. Inhale again. <sighs> strong exhalation. <sighs> inhale again. And now you do the breathing that you can do on stage. Like this. I feel my legs kind of melting. I feel my feet connecting to the floor. And now when I move, ooh, it's, it doesn't matter anymore what was happening. It doesn't matter anymore what I was thinking. I'm just moving. It brings you back, back into the present moment. Yes, even if you're doing a choreography and you're forgetting it and you're panicking, breathing, feeling your body and your body might know the next step. So if you're in a group, <laughs> like for me, this happens in ballet. I love to have the freedom of being a soloist and decide if I want to do my plan or not. So if I am in a group situation, like in ballet recital, I have to do what the group does or they dance all over me or I bump into people and they fall. So I have to do exactly as planned. And it's kind of stressful for me because that's not my usual thing. I'm at I like to be free on stage. So that's, that's where I really have to be focused and practicing your focus that you can do with breath. If you hold your breath, if you cut off the oxygen, your focus will also disappear. Yeah, so if you notice, oh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm doing, check if you are breathing. If not, do it, breathe. <laughs> Preferably <laughs> not this one. You can inhale strongly to center and Exhale and then you go. You just pick up where you left off. Yes, it's a really good reset. Feeling your feet. Breathing, feeling your feet and centering, feeling your axis. Those three things will get you right back to the moment and hopefully then the next step of the choreo <laughs> will come back or your body will do it before your mind or the next thing that you want to do will come out because you're back in the music, yes? If you take this leap of improvisation, which I recommend to everyone to give it to yourself, being there at the edge of your <laughs> capabilities, that's where you learn a lot. Yes, a lot of information goes in, a lot of information is happening and your body is moving. That's where we learn the best. Yes, so it doesn't matter which age, which experience level you have. As a beginner, it's also good to do. Yes, don't judge anything you do. It's all learning. All dancing is learning, all movement is learning, all the attempts you do at anything give you information and make you better. Okay, that's my tip number six. Tip number six is don't judge it. Don't judge your improvisation while you are doing it. There's no use in doing that. You can film yourself or you can have someone else film you or you can ask feedback, but not during the dancing, that's for after. During doing your thing, even in practice, give yourself all the freedom to explore. That's how you get better quicker, yes, by just doing it. And even if you perform for people and you're, you're thinking, oh my God, if I mess this up, my dance life is over. It's not. <laughs> it's not because people forget. You will even forget. You cannot hang on to your best performance forever. If you have a video, yes, you can reshare it. But the next time you dance, 
you will have to dance again. That's why dancing is such an um, interesting art. Yes, it's alive in the moment you do it. And while you're doing it, it changes. And the next time you dance the exact same music piece, is different. Same piece, no matter if you improvise or choreograph, you are different, the atmosphere is different, the audience is different, or the audience is maybe 10 minutes older if you do the same thing twice. It's different, it's alive. So you can never do it wrong. Yes, even if you fall, I've fallen on the stage, you get up, <laughs> you keep going, and your balance will have improved a bit because your body will recalibrate and will know <laughs> what happened even if you don't, yes? Or you may have slipped on your skirt, then you know, okay, I have to hike this up and pin it next time. So any experience you have is valuable and don't judge yourself. Don't judge yourself. Why? Why would you do that? It doesn't give you anything. You can learn, you can think, okay, next time I will do this or this or this, but it doesn't mean anything is good or bad. Yes, there's no value um, <laughs> there's no there's no points you should give yourself okay this brings me back to the next part the next part of the quest so we have six tips yes the sixth one is don't judge <laughs> free yourself of that if you want to judge yourself do it after you perform and give yourself a bit of space before that because it can be really vulnerable if you are um, performing your heart is out there yes you and any criticism, be it from yourself or others, can go straight in. So shield yourself a bit from that. Decide beforehand that no judgment zone is when you perform and that if judgment wants to have a word, you will speak to it after. <laughs> yes. Say to it later. Even if you notice it, say to it later. And then you are free to perform. It's only a few minutes usually, yes. The judgment can wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have, <laughs> we have practice, practice improvisation, practice making dances. We have limitation gives you creativity. So set yourself some, choose an atmosphere, make choices. That's what this is about. Choose an atmosphere, choose a music piece, uh, choose a plan, have a plan, have something you want to express, a theme maybe, can be very abstract or very concrete, that will give you also things. Then the music, listen to it and feel, listen to it and research, try some things with your body and check, and then, then you go with it. Then you, <laughs> you decide that you don't judge it while you perform. And if you get nervous, that was tip number five, connect with your body. Okay, we move on. There's more tips you can do. While you practice improvisation, or while you find yourself improvising, and it's not a rhythm, because the rhythms you can research, it's not the rhythm. Suppose it's either the same rhythm the whole song, or it is kind of freestyle with instruments that don't have a beat. There, that's when, <laughs> that's when the woo starts to happen. That's when you can get um, confused. What do I do? One thing you can do, also this is a choice, it's not a rule, but it may help, is travel in your body. You can start with the feet, feel the feet, Move from the feet. You can do this with me. Yes. So you're breathing. You're not judging. <laughs> you're listening to the music. And you, you focus on your feet. Then you focus on the legs, feeling the knees move. You see, this, this made me do a figure eight. Or maybe I want the knees move, to move together. That makes me do a circle. Then, after a while, you start going to the hips. And this kind of... It made me move my legs and feet also, but... The hips are now talking more. Hi Sabine, hi Miriam, hi Karen. Now that the hips are talking more, maybe I want to focus more on my center. So as you can see, I'm traveling, I'm making a journey <laughs> and I'm doing this in fast forward. Yes, you can have more time with one hip. Then move to the other hip. Eee, there's another one. Then you can go back and forth between the hips and then you can go to the center. For instance, then if you have enough center, you can choose to come down again to the feet or you can travel in and up. Hi Joyce! You can travel in and up. Now we are here at the heart and from the heart you can move out to the shoulder. Now to the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. You can follow the shoulder or you can move the shoulder. You can talk with the shoulder to your audience and then you suddenly have an elbow and you have an elbow on the other side as well. Let the elbows speak. Yes, they can go back, they can go front, 
they can go up, they can come down. Then suddenly, ooh, here are my wrists. And wrists can travel around you. And this can change your focus. Yes, you can have the wrists close to you, close to the audience. They can move quickly, slowly, up and down. The same or question answer. And behind and front. And then, oh, there's your head. You start moving your head. And then from there, you can travel in, out, down, feet. Okay, I think that was a minute at least, yes. All I did was focus on different parts of my body with just music, <laughs> just my inner iPod, not music even. But if you have music, you will have even more things to play with. The music can go up and down. The music can go expressive and internal. And that will give you, that will hold your hand when you're improvising. You don't have to do this all yourself, but it's a good exercise. Yes. So one, one tip, if you find yourself doing a taksim, improv, improvised instrument, and you want to improvise, you don't know anything else, travel down to up, in to out, out to in, and down again. Or you can go to, from one side to the other. So give yourself a trajectory in your body that you follow. There you go. And it will be interesting for the audience and interesting for you. Maybe even interesting and inspiring for the musician if it's just you to soloing. This is something uh, I really recommend. And it's fun to play with in class as well. Oh, my light just kind of <laughs> expanded. So this will give you, hopefully, inspiration. What I did talk about a little, what I just did is I snuck in the next tip. Tip number, oh, I think we're at eight. Tip eight is different uh, concepts, different concepts you can use in a taxi where you're just standing and moving or different concepts you can use when you're filling out a stage. So here we are back to our first tip. What is this for? Yes, is this for a stage performance or is this for a restaurant performance? <laughs> if we ever have restaurant performances again, is it for a wedding? Is it for a birthday party? Is it for students? Is it a hafla? Is it formal, informal? Is it for a competition <laughs> with your favorite teacher? What is it for? If you know what it is for, what it is for, that will change what your plan. Even if your plan is to improvise, having this background, background uh, context, that will give you a direction to go in. If it's for a competition and you need to show technique, uh, styling, different kinds of things, then of course, those will be your anchors. Yes, you have a certain costume that you really want to have <laughs> displayed in this competition. Suppose this is a competition and you know how big the stage is. Those are informations you work with. Yes, even if you improvise, you know you have a lot of space to fill. Your improvisation will have a floor plan, more or less. And I will do it a separate Q&A on making dances because I'm noticing <laughs> I'm not saying we are talking a long time. So for the making dances, for stage and different things, I think we, will, we can do another Q&A, but I'll do it. I'll give you quickly the idea. The idea is if this is a, a big space stage, your uh, improvisation or plan will be involving traveling and standing still. So that's a, the concepts you work with when you make a dance for improvisation or for choreography. These are the building blocks you can work with. So space, big space, small space. If it's on a stage, stagecraft, uh, where's the light? Yes, and do you want to be close to the audience for some parts? Do you want to be in the middle? Do you want to be far away? It's different atmospheres, yes? Far away, you are abstract. Close by, you're a person. In the middle, you're an artist. A bit fantasy and a bit personal. So where you are on stage or even if this is a living room and you dance in it, being close or far away changes uh, the effect. And knowing this, you can use this when you improvise. You think, oh, Saeed is coming, so I'm going to be a bit more personal. Or the party part of this music piece is coming. And, oh, this, this is mysterious. You might want to at least go to center or maybe even in the back and be kind of abstract. Yes, so you play with stagecraft and you study it. Then you have the information. So big or small, even in Taksim. Taksim can be big or small. The music can be big or small. <laughs> then, uh, working with tension. 
you might want to have resistance or be very fluid or be airy. This is something we worked on with Ilan in, um, in his Neo Intensive, which I heartily recommend. If you want to get more comfortable with your body, with improvising to music, we improvise for six minutes using one movement. Not on the first day, but on day three. So if you want to learn more about improvisation, his Neo Intensive, you can get the recordings. I'll add a link to it. Heartily recommend it. He's a beautiful mover and a really nice person. So check out Ilan. Check him out. Dance. Dance student crush, I have. Okay, so you dance big or small, you dance with resistance or not, or in the sliding scale, it can be big, medium, medium, small, 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 tiny. And very much resistance, medium resistance, fluid, air. Or you can have up or down, literally making it more interesting, or expanding and contracting uh, in your body or both you can be contracted enough and then expand and you can be here and then expand so it doesn't <laughs> I, I like this background <laughs> this is kate backdrop by the way this is um fabric you can iron it and you can hang it uh, over a door maybe even this i bought myself like <laughs> holders so I can do this for photo shoots as well but um, I really recommend them they are nice quality and you can wash them so <laughs> Kate backdrops not affiliated I just love them and you can get them in different colors <laughs> anyway where was I okay so up and down but also I didn't do any of this but different angles sideways a sideways shoulder roll is different than in front a belly roll from the front will give you different effects <laughs> my sound is crumbling from the side from diagonal and from the front yes head slides from the front you will see head slides from the side you will not see so you experiment which movements look how <laughs> with which angles so maybe from the back hips you can see very well from the back but even your posture yes make sure you lengthen when you face away from the audience so you stay connected if I'm like this, just doing hips, you're, you've just lost. Everyone starts snacking, yes? You want to, be, to have a bit of communication and awareness to your audience when you face the back. But I do recommend using different angles. And then you can do maybe your shoulder circle. Change the angle, change the angle, change the level. <laughs> change the, <laughs> the direction where you start the movement. Make it big, make it small, and then the speed, slow or fast. This is also, when the music speeds up, you can speed up, but you can also have very fast music in a drum solo, and then you just roll over it. So you play with the timing. And that makes uh, improvisation or choreography, you can also choreograph this, interesting. Yeah, so that's about make, it's about dance craft. Making dance interesting will make improvisation more comfortable but it also will make uh, choreographies more interesting so yes you you work on what's underneath this improvisation your body mind connection if that's better your body will respond better you work on your music knowledge just by listening to the piece and maybe researching that'll make your musical connection better you work on your eyes visual <laughs> you notice things more that you like that will give you better visualization skills, that will give you better an idea of what you are doing and how it looks, even though you cannot see yourself on stage. So practice sometimes with no mirror, but film it so that you can see how, <laughs> what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing and how you think it has an effect and how it actually looks, uh, compare. And then you can learn and adapt from that. Hi, Rosalia. So is this making, I've been talking, is this making any sense? Are these tips um, of value? Is this helpful for you, for improvisation, the things I'm saying? Yes, no? Give me a, <laughs> give me a yes or no if this is helpful for you or if it's something different than you were looking. Also let me know down here if you are more comfortable choreographing or if you're more comfortable improvising. So I'm not asking what you prefer, no judgment, but just what is most comfortable for you when, you when you can choose, what would you choose first to do? 
uh, yes, <laughs> I'll give you some time to type that. And while I do that, let me repeat the tips for those who just tuned in. So the first tip is for improvisation and choreography, it's the same. Yes, if you prefer one, try the other. And preferably, whatever you do, mix it up. Improvise, but have a few things you want to put in there. Choreograph, but have a few pieces where you are free. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> I'm happy it makes sense. It makes sense to me, but one never knows if it also makes sense to others. This is something I learned, by the way, by doing and also by taking different classes. It, it didn't all, you know, it was not in here yet at the beginning. I had to learn a lot of these things the hard way, but some of these I got from workshops or from seeing other people dance or from taking ballet, for instance. That has helped me a lot with um, floor plans. So I will talk about those things, what you can learn for ballet dance from cross training on Thursdays. So if you want to know <laughs> where I got some of my inspirations and informations from, my sources, that's what I talk about on Thursdays. So whatever outside of dance has helped me inside of dance, that's what the Thursday Q&As are for. Choreography and part the improvisation. Yes, yes, yes. And it's good to, ha to allow yourself to do all of that. Because, so we were at, mm, 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 it's a bit of both. Then uh, give yourself limitations or restrictions or choices that give you more freedom. Then let the music guide you in whatever way. Then connect to your body. If you get panicked, breathe. <laughs> then uh, imagine what this is for. Yes, stage or what is the goal? Where will you be dancing? Who is your audience? Yes, yes, yes. There's lots of things you can do. And that's not even talking about the movements. The movements, that's the second part. There you can play with where in your body are you? Yes, are you in your feet? Are you in your knees? Travel, travel, make a trajectory. Next to that, external, internal, floor plan, big or small, up or down, different angles, uh, and on top of that, all the things you had before, how you feel. This is a lot of information. That's why I say um, you don't have to do all of this in every dance that you now do. Pick and choose a few of these um, tips and themes and try to apply at least one of them in the next dance you make, in the next time you dance uh, in your living room and film it and see if something resonates. That which resonates the most, usually that's what uh, that's what will be helpful immediately. The tip that will um, that gives you resistance, <laughs> that you think, yeah, 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 yeah. Most usually, that's the one that has the most potential for you. So let me know down there, which of these tips was most helpful to you? Which one of these resonates with you? Which one could you apply like that and it will help you? And which one of these are you like, mm, <laughs> I know in theory that it's uh, useful, but I don't know if I want to do it. Yes, let me know. Um, so on texture of movement, we will go deeper into that and stagecraft, we will go deeper into that because I think that's, that's a whole topic. Making dances, it's a bit of overlap with this one, but I think, uh, I think that deserves its own Q and A. So all the questions you have about making dances, drop them in the <laughs> in the comments. Also, I'm asking you to type a lot of things. So let me know which do you prefer. Also for those who see this later, are you more comfortable improvising or more comfortable making dances? Try the opposite or a bit of it. Second, which of these tips is most helpful for you? <laughs> what resonated most, or what do you think? Oh yes, this I need. And which of these tips feel a bit uncomfortable even thinking about it? That like, oh, I don't know if I should do it. <laughs> Let me know. And then uh, making dances, we will do that on one of the Wednesdays. Where I get my input inspiration for these kinds of dance things, that's for Thursdays. So we will talk about what ballet, for instance, has taught me. Next week, I want to go into, let me uh, remember, yes, there was a question from someone how to remember choreography. So if you are going to challenge yourself and do <laughs> make a choreography and then do it, it can be hard to remember it, yes? Or if you are taking a class, the teacher goes crazy, how to remember it? Or if you have a choreography, 
you're okay with remembering it, but you perform it and then it disappears. I have tips for that and this I will do next week. So next week, tips on how to remember <laughs> choreography. And you can use all the improvisation tips as a plan B. Yes, yeah, so if the remembering doesn't happen, you freestyle, you give yourself permission. Yes, one of the tips I forgot to mention was don't judge. Don't judge while you're dancing. That's not the time for it. Do that if you want to do it later. Sleep on it, preferably, in between. Yeah, so the things inside the dance, trajectory, big or small, your floor plan, if you have a floor plan, your uh, intensity of movement, is it strong, <laughs> is it fluid, is it light and airy, how close are you to the audience um, with your expression, are you directly speaking to them or are you dancing internally, that, that changes movement, so if you are doing, a <laughs> maybe that's not the best example, but if you're doing a camel straight at someone, looking at them, it can be quite intense, yes? So that kind of movement, you may want to be careful with it and, and bring it in a bit, or you can play with it. You can do a nice little camera and then look, yes? That makes, that makes your audience wake up. So breathing and posing, yes, breathing and posing. If you don't know anything else, breathe and pose. This can be a nice little pose, a nice little pause for your audience, yes? Adding in some breaks. Also, when you Choreograph, choreograph silence in your dances. We will talk about this uh, after the rim. So in March, I will do a Q&A on making dances. So that's, that's a bonus tip from then. Give yourself, allow yourself to not know, yes? If you're not sure what to do next, stick with that feeling. It's okay to not know it. As long as you keep, <laughs> as long as you stay on stage, don't run away. Just breathe, keep breathing. Then go in a pose if you don't know anything else. I have, I have a four hour posing for pictures uh, workshop. You only need one pose, yes? And you go in and out of it. And then you can start, start from the feet again, for instance, hopefully, yes. So that's, there's always things you can do. Start with your body, add the music, then the audience. I think <laughs> going from in to out makes a nice uh, spiral of energy, yes? So don't forget about your audience. It's not just about you. <laughs> it's dancing is a kind of communication. It's not only about the audience. You don't want to do only the things that are um, considered people pleasing. You also want to express something of you, yes? If there's no you in there, what's the point? It has to, <laughs> it has to be something with soul. At least that's my opinion. Even if I just do a silly dance, um, it's always me, yes? I want to dance as myself. The most glam version of myself, or maybe a fantasy version of myself, maybe a superhero version of myself, but it is still me inside, yes? And even if you are normally kind of shy person, that's okay, you don't have to let that define you. So even if it's you, I mean the broader you, not, not the, who, <laughs> the you you think you are, yes? You are more than that, you and your potential those you bring to the stage or to the living room, yes? <laughs> so whenever you do dance something, whenever you improvise, realize that uh, whatever you are doing in that moment is unique and it is beautiful. Yes, no judgment. I know that if someone dances, no matter their level, even a beginner dancer, if I'm a teacher and I see a student do something and they start to enjoy it, it makes my heart happy, yes? It makes me I cannot, <laughs> I cannot express it in words well, but it does something, it touches me. When I see someone enjoying the movement and you as a dancer, even if you don't define yourself like that, you as a being, <laughs> if you move and you enjoy this movement, your audience will know, your audience will know. They will also know if you're just worrying and worrying is giving them less. You are doing more for your audience if you want to do something for them when you enjoy your movement. So forget all the tips that I gave in the last <laughs> almost hour. <laughs> Rule number one is if you enjoy it, the audience enjoys it. If you enjoy it, it's worth it. And even if you just enjoy one little second because the rest is uncomfortable, 
staying on your dancing until this moment of enjoyment helps and doing all the things that you remember like breathing feeling your feet listening to the music realizing that you can move realizing that you are uh, alive <laughs> which is which is not something to be taken for granted that can bring you a spark of joy if you know nothing else if you want to set your mind to to giving yes um, imagine Imagine you love dancing, yes. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. Imagine you enjoy dancing. Imagine you like music. Imagine there's a reason for you to be there and the reason is good. This may also help. Also, you can imagine all the people you love, all the things you love, all the things you are thankful for, something you did 10 years ago that you are still proud of, something good someone did for you, all these kinds of things, you can tell them to yourself or you can worry about something, yes? You have power over your mind and mindset changes how your body functions, yes? You can put yourself on lock and you can unlock yourself and you can train this. If this is not easy for you, then and if this gives you a bit of resistance, then that is probably the thing that will give you the most. Being nice to ourselves on stage, being nice to ourselves while we are dancing, that can unlock all the other skills, yes? Allow yourself to make mistakes. Allow yourself to do whatever. Allow yourself to be boring. That will make you more interesting because you might enjoy a little moment and that might make someone's day. And that someone might be you. <laughs> okay. On that note, I have to wrap this up because I, <laughs> I was planning to do just half an hour. I hope shopping, you have shock. Let me check the comments, yes. Very helpful, thank you. Thank you too. Uh, choreography and partly improvisation. Choreography, yes. Prefer to improvise, yes. We have all kinds of people and all kinds of preferences. Let me oh, lower the light a bit so I'm not a big ball of light. Hi Katja, I just see you now. And yes, I have shocking memory, hence why I prefer to improvise, yes. But it doesn't need to limit you. There are things you can do to make uh, memorizing easier. So we'll do that in uh, the next the next Q&A, how to memorize movement using your brain and your body. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow we will meet at Joy of Movement, my other group, the one for cross training. Thank you too. Thank you very much for being here, by the way. I forgot to say that, but I'm really, really thankful that uh, there's any people joining these Q&As because I think this is something... Um, this is something I might enjoy, so I wanted to share it. There's a lot of topics that I have been um, doing, thinking about in these 20 years of dance and maybe, maybe some of it is useful for you. If yes, share this video. You can, um, you can share the Facebook Live <laughs> as soon as I save it and I will put it on YouTube, so the subtitles, and you can share the YouTube with whoever you think might, uh, might enjoy this, might find some comfort in this because I think improvising, it's a very nice skill to have. It's, uh, it can enrich your dancing enormously, even if you only do a little bit. Thank you, Kirsi. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so <laughs> that's it for today. Thank you very, very much for being here. Join me on Thursdays for cross-training input. So that's my sources. That has enriched my dancing enormously. And next Wednesday, the next dance Q&A, we will go into memorizing. <laughs> choreography and not stressing out about performing anything and uh, forgetting what you're doing. You're, you're so very, very welcome. I love sharing these kind of things. It makes me also think deeper about these topics and I feel it makes me a better teacher to share it. And mm, who knows, if this is useful for anyone and it makes more people dance and if it gets more people to move more freely, then that's my main mission. Yes, I want people to move. <laughs> so that's all the things I do. Um, are connected to that and for those who want to know what I do I do this Q&A's this is new on Wednesdays for dance on Thursdays for cross training I do a week a monthly rhythm and dance for those who want to go in rhythms in this group in Kalida online I do boost classes and that's my weekly classes they are not like normal dance classes we go into body mind connection opening ranges of motion and working from the inside out so whatever your dance style is whatever your level is even for teachers it may be interesting on mondays we do strengthening or activation of joints on tuesday we go into releasing 
tension or releasing ranges of motion that were lost or rediscovering. Then you have a couple of days of rest and on Fridays we apply it to very basic or maybe very specific dance movements and the work of Mondays and Tuesdays mm, might change. And I, I got this idea because I had an injury that I had to work through and this gave me more more connection with my body and it changed everything it changed my life so the boost series now is sold out but i want to open it up the next the next one the I next catch that <laughs> sorry my, my watch the next boost this was important the next boost series will start i think in december already and i want to already open up the notification list so if you're interested get on the notify list i will add a link here and i will let you know when the next boost gates open and I hopefully will be able to have more students join then. So if you like it now, if you're a boosty, get on the notify list. So I know you want to maybe continue. It's not an obligation, but then I know how much interest there is. And if you're not a boosty, but it intrigues you, get on the notify list and you will be updated on the developments because this is a living thing. Yes, it is where I put in everything that I think may change the way you move, the way you feel, and hopefully also It'll spread. I want as many people as possible to take the boost classes. So this knowledge, because it has been doing such uh, intense changes have been happening. It, it's as overwhelming. We are now at week five and there's so much happening that I did not expect. And it makes me so happy that I'm kind of changing the plan. I'm speeding things up and I want to already gather the people who want to join me in the long boost. So the the next boost, maybe starting in December, I want to know who wants to join me so I can start working on it already in the back of my mind. So that's that's for my future and current boosties or past boosties who are not able to do it this year. If you're still interested, it may be a bit more fluid that you don't have to sign up for nine months but can go in and out. That I can only do if we have enough people. So let me know if you're interested. It's important to me that I know and then we can get to work. Okay, okay, that's it. That's it what we do. Tomorrow, cross training. Next week, choreography. Uh, and boost we do during the week. So that's it from me. I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope this can percolate a bit in the back of your mind. I will add a link to Elan's um, Neo Intensive, where I learned about the different ways you can use one movement with different flavors, different structures. That may be interesting for those of you who like improvisation or want to get more familiar. Yeah. That's it. Any other questions, just let them know in the comments. They will stay open and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks for being here. Mwah.